very much. Senator Tuberville, let me now recognize Senator Warren, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to both of our witnesses for being here today and for your many years of service to our nation. The RAND Corporation, a nonpartisan research organization that studies national security issues, recently published a report that found a number of pitfalls in the way that our military prevents, investigates, and responds to reports of civilian harm, including, and I want to read from the report, DOD is not adequately organized, trained, or equipped to fulfill its current responsibilities for addressing civilian harm, end quote. Now, I think that's a pretty damning finding, particularly as this is far from a new issue for the United States. I know that Secretary Austin has asked DOD to develop an action plan, and I agree with him that protection of civilians is both a strategic and a moral imperative. So I want to learn more about your work to prevent civilian harm in your respective commands. General Towson, if I can, I'll start with you on this. AFRICOM provides a quarterly report updating the public on the status of all reports of civilian casualties, and it issued one just late last week. What benefit do you see in regular reporting of civilian casualties to the public? Senator, I believe that uh, being transparent is probably, uh, or you know, it, it shows the difference between us and, uh, well, for example, the Russians in Ukraine right now. So I believe that publishing those reports publicly and regularly on a, on a routine basis is our best uh, tool for gaining the trust of the American public. Uh, and I agree with you, and I commend you for doing this. You know, that kind of regular transparency shows that the command is prioritizing and investigating claims of civilian harm. And I'd like to see that kind of regular reporting from all of the combatant commanders. So, General, now let me ask you another question about this. Would you agree that there are several reputable, trusted NGOs and independent observers in civil society that produce reliable reporting on civilian harm? I think I would. Good. Has AFRICOM undertaken a formal process to incorporate feedback from these groups uh, to improve how it tracks and responds to civilian harm? Yes, Senator, we take their feedback with every report they make. Well, that's important, and I think, but let me ask you, do you have a formal process for doing this, or are you just kind of integrated as you go along? Uh, we have a, a portal that anyone uh, that has access to the Internet can report uh, civilian casualties or take exception to our evaluation of those. Good. I'm, I'm glad to hear this. You know, these groups can provide essential information, not only uh, – to accurately identify where you need to investigate claims of civilian harm, but also to help in prevent the killing of civilians in future strikes. Uh, Rand's report recommended that DOD engage with outside groups more, and I'm, I'm glad to see you doing this. General McKenzie, if I can, let me, let me talk with you a minute here. The vast majority of the civilian casualties caused by the U.S. military operations have occurred in CENTCOM's AOR. Not only that, but reporting from the New York Times found major instances of civilian harm in Syria that had been covered up. Does CENTCOM have an established process for incorporating feedback from trusted civil society groups to improve the ways that it prevents and responds to instances of civilian harm? Senator, it, we did, and it was not as robust or as straightforward a program as it should have been. In the wake of the RAND report and other reports, we've taken 10 discrete actions that are designed all to more formalize and provide additional oversight on the possibility of civilian casualties. Good. I'm very glad to hear that, General, because given their expertise, I think we have a lot to learn from these groups, and it can help improve processes. And it's long past time that the United States took seriously the impact of the way that it treats civilian harm. And I'm glad that Secretary Austin is addressing this, but meaningful change is going to take buy-in from the two of you, from your successors, and from the rest of the DOD leadership. I'm working on legislation to address these problems, 
But in the meantime, I'll be paying close attention to the department's action plan and to your work implementing it in the hopes that some of the principles that we've talked about today uh, will be implemented soon. So thank you very much. Thank you for your work on this. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Warren. Senator Tillis, please. 